Hello, this is Zara Sotter speaking, Chief Marketing Officer of Quobis. Thanks for joining this uh, webinar uh, about Web RTC in the Bolti and over the top here. This is the second edition of the webinar. We have another edition in, in this morning, in Europe time. And this has been thought for those partner customers and so that are reaching from Americas. We are using go to webinar today, so uh, you should have an option probably in the right side of your screen in order to send the questions. Here as a moderator, I can read all your questions in real time, but just in case I will left some minutes at the end of the webinar yes, to answer the questions that you have submitted. Uh, we had a lot of questions this uh, this morning, and uh, some of them were really interesting ones. So I would try to add uh, uh, both uh, part of the answers uh, uh, to these questions during the the presentation that uh, I will have later. Uh, another topic is uh, related with the duration of the webinar it has been thought to last around 45 to 50 minutes, including the uh, including the questions and answers. And for those of you who don't remember the um, agenda that we are going to have today, uh, first, uh, remember that uh, we have three different models, but we are going to start to review which is the state of the art of Web RTC, especially focus on, on the mobile devices. Um, later we have three different models. So the first one is called Survive to the, um, to the IP network. So we are going to explain the role of WebRTC in Balti, in RCS, in Voice of the Wi-Fi and so. The second one is related with uh, customized user experience uh, about over-the-top services and unified integration. Um, unified communication integration, shall we? And uh, well, here I want to explain how um, Telco suits build uh, over the top service and uh, how for the enterprise and uh, small and medium sized companies, how they can manage integration with their existing assets of the, of the enterprises. And the last model is called including telco services in business applications and webs. Uh, we are going to explain the role of the phone number and how telcos are exploring the possibility to expose via, via APIs some of their network capacities, including uh, web RTC. And how, just some examples about how telcos can build packet solutions for the small and medium sized market. Um, what else uh, before starting? Yes, uh, remember that well, we always have uh, uh, this uh, question, the slides are going to be available, okay, so probably later you will receive an email with this content, with the slides that I'm going to share uh, today. And also the recordings, uh, we have recorded the webinar of uh, of, uh, this morning, uh, but I am recording this one as well because we have changed the microphone because uh, uh, we had some complaints with the quality of voice, uh, noise, and echoes, and this type of things. So I hope that the quality of experience is is better now. So well, let's move to the uh, to the first part. Remember, we are going to discuss during the first minutes about the current situation of, uh, of Web RTC. Uh, probably most of you already know what Web RTC is, but just let us introduce, sorry, okay, uh, which is the current situation, which is the uh, which type of things, what we can do with, uh, with the technology today. First, uh, we have detected that some telcos identify Web RTC just with the web domain, with voice calls, but this is not uh, completely true because, first of all, uh, Web RTC is supporting a lot of different multimedia capabilities. Okay. Browsers are uh, 
supporting a web RTC API, something that was defined by the WBC consortium, and Internet um, Explorer, you know, Microsoft Edge, Chrome, and Firefox, depending on the version, and so are supporting uh, part of, uh, uh, of the methods of this API or are supporting uh, the API completely. Uh, this is uh, allowing a lot of different multimedia capabilities, including voice and, and even video, but also uh, start messaging, live chat, phone transfer, and those that are related with collaboration, like screen sharing or co -mosing. Okay, just to give you an example, in the left side of this slide, you can see a, a, well, an example of the current user interface. Uh, that we have uh, as a default one for Power Collaborator and that you, you can see that it's not only voice, video, we have a lot of different options and we have a, a, an advanced chance, chat sorry, where we can share images or, or uh, file transfer or, or, or this type of things. So moving to the next slide, uh, well, I mentioned before, WebRTC Web has been thought for um, for web browsers. This morning we had uh, a question related with the adoption of WebRTC in these browsers. Well, today more or less we can say that in Firefox, Chrome, Opera is completely supported. Uh, this is not the case of Internet Explorer and Safari, but uh, well, with the last version of the browser of Microsoft with uh, Microsoft Edge. Uh, WebRTC is, is now supported. No, so we, uh, we, we had experimented uh, a slow adoption of WebRTC by these uh, browser manufacturers and today well, they are, most of them are, are completely uh, supporting WebRTC. Uh, for those that lack of WebRTC uh, support, it's, it's, it is possible to install a plugin or an extension in order to bring WebRTC capabilities to the browser. This is something that you need to install that is not included in the browser by default, but it's something that would be really helpful for uh, those browsers like Safari or Internet Explorer that are not supporting uh, WebRTC today. But as you can see in this slide, this is not completely, well, browsers is a possibility and in fact this is uh, HTML5 uh, code, it's JavaScript code, uh, but this code can be also adaptive, uh, adapted into a um, native application for PC, Mac or Linux. Uh, so there are some um, uh, frameworks in order to help you to uh, adapt this code into into an application that in some use well, some use cases and with some customers is more interesting than uh, using a browser. But it's also possible uh, to grab the code and well, this, this is what uh, I'm going to explain in the next slide uh, into uh, applications for smartphones. And this is a uh, uh, um, I think that this is the unique slide that is focusing in what we are providing and something that I think that is important just to explain um, which is the, well, the opinion or the uh, thoughts of our company are related with our experiences and well, you need to know that uh, um, we, are, we have a, a network uh, element that we call SIPOWAC that uh, comes from WebRTC application controller that you can see as a, a application server for WebRTC and using this uh, application controller and the APIs that this application controller is exposing is, is uh, what well, we build uh, uh, applications for customers. So we are working in the application layer and this is important because you can see below that is an element that says uh, WebRTC gateway and, uh, and for this uh, element for the WebRTC gateway we are relying on third parties and this is the case as just a, as an example of Oracle, no? we have been working for a long time with them 
uh, using this element that is managing the communication from a session point of view. No? So the real-time traffic from the application, from the device, is going, both signaling and media is going to the, uh, uh, through a, a web RTC gateway, in this case, as an example from, uh, from Oracle. So the approach that we have and the opinions that uh, that we have are based in the uh, approach that we have for the for the map. Later, if we have time, uh, at the end I can explain better which is the role that we provide in the uh, multi or in general in the telco ecosystem. Okay. Um, another thing that is important is that uh, well um, the, the applications that we develop are good on top of an, uh, an API, an SDK, depending on the type of device, um, SIPO ES or SIPO SDK. And uh, basically what we have using this uh, API and SDK is, is, uh, is uh, a feature that is provided by something that we call SIPO abstraction layer. Mm -hmm. And with this abstraction layer, we are trying to hide all the complexity that we have in the user device, uh, take into account that the uh, uh, user can well, uh, have any type of device, including smartphones, tablets, PCs, uh, smart TVs, or any type of device can run that can run a browser. Uh, can be, can, he can use a smartphone with different uh, OS, Android, iOS, etc. Uh, he can use different uh, web browsers. So, well, I mentioned before that depending on the browser, they provide more or less uh, web RTC support. Where, uh, they are supporting different uh, methods. And uh, all this fragmentation that we have with the user device, including uh, those related with the network access, uh, uh, if the guy is using a, a, a public uh, a network, a private one, behind NAT, behind Fargo, or so, is something that we are abstracting by, by these elements. No? So we are making the application work uh, with no dependencies on the type of device and network that the customer is using. And this is a critical feature that we are providing. Okay. Uh, second, is related with something that you probably know, WebRTC is a pretty open standard. It, it, it's not stating anything for signaling. And as we are working with different vendors, uh, um, um, these vendors are supporting different signaling protocols, uh, including SIP over what socket. That is something that uh, we were behind the definition of this uh, uh, standard. Uh, they are using JSON or they are using their own proprietary APIs. And this is something that we are also abstracting with the WAC. So with the WAC, you can make different applications, all the same application work with different category vendors. No? It's something that sometimes is uh, interesting. So moving to the web RTC in mobile devices. Um, and here, I think that is uh, important that uh, well, we have a problem here. No? That uh, uh, today there are different platforms. Android, iOS, this morning we have different questions related with uh, Windows Mobile, Windows Phones, Blackberry, no? all these uh, uh, platforms require specific implementations. And there are two different approaches. The first one is to build a native application from scratch for all the different platforms that uh, you demand. Second, it's an approach based on hybrid applications where you are using the same code that you have for the web browser to convert to that, this code into an application for all the specific platforms. Here are different approaches, so I will explain this later. Um, while with the native approach, you are experimenting more costs, basically because you need to develop the applications for two, three, or four different platforms. Uh, in the second one, the problems are more related with the size. We are uh, adding a lot of uh, uh, libraries that are increasing the size of the application. Um, we have more problems with uh, speed on, uh, on the mobile device. So sometimes, one, uh, you know, that we are managing real-time traffic. Sometimes 
uh, the state of application is critical here. And finally, well, some, well something that uh, we are studying there are tricky solutions. I mean, that this type of things that depends on the platform, like push notifications, access to the local agenda of the device that you need to adapt to make this application work properly. Mm -hmm. So, well, I have explained part of the problems that are with the two different uh, approaches there. Um, first, uh, we are going to introduce uh, uh, which is the approach that we are using for hybrid applications, but you need to know with this slide is that we are using the same HTML5 code and we can use a wrapper in the form of a web view uh, uh, to create a specific application based on the, um, on the HTML5 code or um, use this in an existing hybrid application where we can add WebRTC as a communication layer in a, in a previous exist, existing application. And this is the example that you can see in the upper part. You know, where we are, we have a, a component as a web view that is uh, running in, included in, a, in an existing application. Moving to the next slide, is more uh, uh, more information here that explain this better. Uh, we have different stacks. CPOJS with the abstraction layer concepts is what is hiding all these different uh, stacks that the application needs to support in order to work with different uh, platforms. On top of CPOJS, uh, we build uh, a web-based HTML5 application that could be the same one that we are going to, to run in a, in a browser. And we are uh, wrapping this using uh, Cordova. Okay. In order, there are different uh, frameworks. In fact, uh, today we are using Cordova. Uh, we had um, a question this morning about uh, which others could be used. Uh, this is something that, well, uh, you know, I'm more focused on, on marketing areas. It's, it's not a, a good uh, question for us, but in, in case you, you, you want to have more information, it's something that we can provide later. Okay. So using Cordova, we got, we add this into a hybrid application, and basically it's the it's a product that we are using uh, uh, we are using here. Also, this hybrid application has a, um, a, a browser that is open in the application that we already have. Uh, the other approach, remember here, the problem is the cost. They have a lot of uh, advantages with the previous one, but the key problem is the cost because you need to develop this more or less from from scratch. Again, you have the two possibilities. Uh, use uh, uh, a component for the whole application um, or just to add a component to a previous existing uh, um, uh, native application. And uh, related with uh, moving to the next uh, slide, uh, here, well, again, we are going to uh, still using um, uh, CPO EAS, but he, what we are need, we need here is something that we call CPO uh, SDK uh, in order to build this application from scratch and, uh, and use the methods that are going to work properly with the um, uh, with the gateway and uh, and with the WAC. So here we are going to have all the flexibility that uh, that you can imagine but it's something that you need to develop uh, ad hoc for all, all the platforms so basically this is the current situation in, the, in terms of the state of the art uh, let me move to the first model of the of the webinar and that is called survive to the ip network multi uh, or, or cs and first, we are going to start moving to the next one by uh, um, comparison of uh, Volti versus WebRTC from four different points of view. And the first one is related with the device, how uh, WebRTC and Volti is working in different devices. Well, you know that I have explained before, which is the uh, um, type of support that we have in all the different devices for WebRTC. In the case of Volti, the current situation that's more or less we can say that only modern smartphones are uh, supporting Volti. 
So, well, we can say that uh, Web RTC can run in more devices today than, uh, than both. And in terms of uh, infrastructure, um, we have said before that Web RTC is really flexible, it's open because it's not setting anything for signaling and so. Um, for sure, Volt is, is, is more close. So here the, there have been a lots of, uh, of work in standardization and uh, as a consequence, not too many vendors are in the market today. You need uh, some specific elements and probably at the same time you need a high investment to support this. No? So it's not completely flexible from the point of view of devices. Uh, you need a high investment in terms of uh, infrastructure. In terms of uh, coverage, well, WebRTC, you can see WebRTC is an over-the-top service. So when you have uh, internet or so data connectivity, uh, it should work. Okay, in the case of Volti, well, the first limitation is that you need uh, LTE for this. That's uh, what uh, today, probably in, in Western Europe, uh, uh, North and South America is, uh, is, is available, okay? Uh, or there are some rollouts to, uh, to make LTE uh, available, but in any case, it's something that, that you need. Uh, it has the advantage, uh, this technology that uh, well, offers by default quality of service for voice, that for WebRTC, at least as default, is, is, is not provided. For sure, telcos can uh, give uh, priority to the traffic of uh, Web RTC, but it's something that you need to, uh, to adapt. And uh, finally, in terms of um, uh, quality of experience, I think that the most important here is that uh, while with Volti uh, you can't build some specific uh, um, uh, applications. No? So, uh, in the case of WebRTC, is more flexible, and uh, WebRTC is being adopted for employee communication, for residentials, but it's also being adopted for customer care and a lot of different uh, layouts, user interface, and all that, so that you can uh, you can build uh, using this. So the role of uh, WebRTC, as we can see, you know, remember the point of view that uh, our company has, is that well, WebRTC could play a role for those telcos that are already investing in Volti, but uh, normally as a way to extend the current services, the services that you are building with uh, Volti, to other devices that are not directly connected to the, to the network. Those devices that are not supporting uh, uh, Volte today, those devices that, uh, that lack of a SIM card and well, as you can imagine, cannot have access to, uh, uh, to this. Thing. Um, basically, it's what we are trying to say here. Well, together with the fact that uh, as uh, WebRTC is, is, is pretty flexible in terms of user experience, user interface, you can replicate the same uh, layout, the same uh, design that you have for your uh, Volti application. So well, you can have uh, allow your uh, users to have a web RTC endpoint with the same user interface that you have for the Volti enabled device. Okay. So this here is an example, and this is something that I hope you can see this video. If not, this well, it's available in our YouTube channel. In the same place, in fact, in the same channel that is going to be uh, that are going to be available the the recordings for today. Here, what we are trying to explain how well we can detach the telephone number. That I will explain this later. But how um, uh, for an enterprise uh, use case, how you, uh, the telco can replicate the traffic and make a simultaneous call between different devices, including a dex phone including a mobile device and uh, your web browser. And here, as an example, we are receiving a call in the web browser while our next phone and mobile device is ringing at the, at the same time. You know? So here is just to give you an idea of the uh, flexibility that uh, WebRTC can, can provide for a, uh, for a, for a telco. No? So it's helping to uh, develop a specific uh, use cases. No? And here, well, at the end of the, this video, basically what we have is that we also can make uh, uh, voice or video calls from, from the WebRTC endpoint to a, 
to an OCS um, uh, device. So, stopping the video, moving to, uh, to the next slide. Now, two slides just to mention uh, what is happening with uh, OCS today. Well, uh, I think that we had a webinar last year and we were uh, discussing about what is going to happen with OCS. Um, today, we can say that OCS is silently back. As the title of the, this slide. Um, uh, we can say that it's the natural way to add uh, messaging uh, in multi networks. And so, well, we know that some telcos are adopting this as a possibility to add uh, start messaging, uh, live chats to their multi strategy. And at the same time, uh, there is a new opportunity because, well, you know that Google has invested. Uh, after the acquisition of J Mobile, and they are adding uh, OCS uh, support for all the devices that uh, all the Android devices, probably as a way to compete with uh, FaceTime with uh, from iOS. So well, uh, we thought uh, two years ago that OCS was that. Well, no, it's not completely. So now it's uh, displaying a role, and uh, let's see what it's going to. Uh, to happen again, um, and uh, which is the role of uh, WebRTC here? Well, it's pretty similar to Volt. In fact, uh, um, well, Volt is more related with access, or CS is the application. So here, in the case of WebRTC, the access is more the data access. Uh, WebRTC is more thought to be the application. So. Uh, what we said before about the role of work is also in the multi domain is also valid for RCS. Not all devices are supporting RCS today, and work provides this type of, uh, of flexibility with the advantage, two advantages here. First one, uh, the same as stated before, we can replicate the same RCS interface working with the local agenda and so. Uh, second, depending on the device, you don't need to install anything there. So for live chat, for the sporadic use, uh, could be uh, really interesting. Okay. So more or less, this is the role of uh, WebRTC, the multi and RCS domain, and we are going to move to the uh, to the next part of the presentation, and uh, and uh, that is called customized user experience uh, over top services and unified communication integration. And here we are going to mention uh, two or three different points that I think that are relevant today. We are not discussing um, specific use cases. Probably at the end, uh, I have a couple of, of slides just to explain uh, real scenarios, real use cases. I hope we have time to, to share them. Um, here first is something that is important to mention. Uh, WebRTC, uh, most of you uh, think that WebRTC is related with video, especially those that, that are related with services or enterprise domain. Um, for those that are working uh, from an IMS perspective in a telco, probably WebRTC is more related to a new uh, way to bring more voice calls. Um, but also, uh, WebRTC is really interesting to build um, uh, testing centric services. And, uh, and here, just uh, as an example, is something that well, some some telcos are doing today. They are building their um, um, messaging services based on WebRTC, with all the benefits that I had explained before: no need to start, no device support, and so. And it's a way to compete with over-the-top service. And this is something that is important because well, uh, we built, uh, we have this brand SIPO, we have uh, an application that runs with the SIPO work that is called SIPO Web Collaborator. And SIPO Web Collaborator is, uh, is an application built on top of SIPO JS and SIPO SDK. And basically what we have is something that can run in a browser but also in a mobile device with a similar user interface that you have for, for any over, over the top service. And this is uh, interesting because well, it's something that is really easy to adapt, pretty flexible in terms of uh, branding, look and feel, graphical elements and so, to build your own uh, over the top service with uh, uh, a small uh, 
uh, investment, no? something that is, is possible to do. Um, but, well, and this is a question that we had this morning, uh, which is the role of the telco in an um, ecosystem, in a world uh, with lots of different over the tops are role playing. And we have identified uh, some potential on telcos, um, some strengths, okay, that could be used in order to be more competitive uh, with this type of services. This morning I, we had a question that well, it's, it's, it's interesting to be competitive, but we are uh, fighting in a market uh, that has no revenues. Um, well, this is true, but it's partly true because we also have uh, interest in um, provide more services to your customer in order to make more uh, loyable. Um, but also, some opportunities are arising. Uh, we, we have been involved in different events the last weeks. Um, uh, all the startups, um, big companies, in fact, are talking about big data, about uh, um, uh, artificial intelligence for chatbots and so. So to have these uh, testing services, to have more information about the user, is uh, is really interesting today and uh, to play able to uh, uh, to have your own over the top service could be interesting. But uh, in addition, uh, I think that two points uh, uh, are interesting here. First, you have some existing elements that can be really interesting interesting for uh, deploying a, a, a over the top. Uh, um, the first one is, uh, well, uh, you have uh, elements like uh, the ball or the way to manage the identity of the users. Uh, you can manage, uh, well, you, you have uh, the address of the user, you can send invoice, uh, you know personal information of the users that probably the, tel the over the tops uh, don't. Um, you are compliant with a uh, local regulation. So these are part of the strength. You own the network, in fact, so you can also add quality of service there. Um, so these are part of the strengths that can be used uh, 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 in case you are at our bank. I think that uh, are um, interesting here. Second, uh, this type of over the tops are not providing a convenient solution for medium or uh, large uh, enterprises, and here you can play a role uh, in order to provide a specific applications that fit with the demands of your critical customers. Mm -hmm. uh, considering this as, as, as the large enterprises, mm -hmm. um, you can connect with uh, uh, local directories of the company or provide a network address book. You can help to integrate with this, uh, existing unified communications platforms. Uh, you can provide services like recording. Uh, there are lots of regulation in different countries in the European Union, in the US, uh, for recording in banks and in other critical um, and markets. Well, lots of services that are specific demands of enterprise users that are not going to rely on WhatsApp for this. No, they're probably uh, uh, they're going to skip uh, WhatsApp and similar services, and they are going to buy their own. And this is something that. Uh, uh, that you can provide uh, again with the uh, key benefits that uh, uh, I explained before. You are uh, getting a lot of uh, data that you can use in the future and so So moving to this slide here, what we have is uh, uh, just to explain that uh, both SIP of collaborators is playing a role as any other WorkRTC applications to provide mobility. Uh, to uh, employees of uh, enterprises, so WebRTC can work from any network, and it's, it's something that uh, is really useful and, uh, uh, for some enterprises, and also is uh, is uh, helping with the bring your own device challenge. Um, this works in any device. Uh, you can allow your users to connect with any uh, from any. Um, a device and a network, and it's, it should work. Um, moving to this slide is just to, uh, we, we have here just uh, three, three or four slides focus on, on the enterprise domain, okay? 
And basically this one uh, wants to explain that today we have different Thailand in the uh, enterprise uh, uh, reality. This, uh, these companies already have landlines with dex phones. They have uh, employees with mobile devices. They have them on PBX, SVCs, and they have uh, video conferencing solutions from meeting rooms. Uh, sometimes it's the telco, the one that is providing this type of uh, interconnection. We have lots of reference, a lot of customers that are using session border controllers that are provided by uh, uh, telcos. And just to give you an example, that uh, using this figure, that what is just a, a new channel in this omni-channel uh, strategy of the enterprises. And uh, you tell them you can provide, so you can connect your customers, um, or you can provide a gateway um, uh, in your core network in order to expose some WorkRTC capabilities uh, to allow enterprise uh, customers to connect their WorkRTC base endpoints and be fully connected with the existing reality of the, the customer. And uh, as I stated before, um, these type of enterprises are willing to connect everything with their existing assets. Uh, in terms of authentication, directories, well, in the case of directories, some telcos uh, were exploring uh, the possibility to expose network address books to, uh, as a service to enterprises. I think it's working pretty well, but in any case, uh, um, to provide connectivity. Uh, with the uh, reality of the enterprise uh, is also possible. Again, to store political records, to voice and video recordings with the existing assets of the, of the company, and also with the policy managers, in case they have, uh, that can manage the service and also the user rights, the user privileges. And uh, here, just uh, well, just how to explain how companies, telcos are providing solutions to connect with uh, um, reality of an enterprise. Imagine a use case of WebRTC for customer care that you are adding a critical button in the website of the uh, uh, company, and, uh, and in this case, is the um, uh, well, the, the customer is willing to use the existing contact center platform, imagine that it's Cisco, Bayer, Genesis, or any other. So, uh, something that the telco can provide is the, the gateway and the application controller uh, hosted. And first, uh, making a voice call through the existing contact center platform via SIPTRANK or reaching via PSTN, the call center platform of the, of the, of the company. And after the call is established that you have uh, an agent of the call center allocated uh, uh, for this call and you have this ongoing voice call, make a second call uh, from browser to browser. In this case, the browser of the same agent. Uh, and this is a smart way to add video or collaboration to um, those enterprises that lack of this type of services. And as I'm running out of time, I'm going to move uh, uh, fast through these two uh, uh, slides. Basically, well, just to give you an example about how Telco can provide these two elements, uh, but can help to interconnect with the PBX of the uh, end customer in, call, in case it's a hosted solution. Uh, well, th this PBS could be on-premise or provided uh, as a soft client or IP-centric solution by the, uh, by the telco. No? And this is a way to add these WebRTC endpoints for mobile devices or WebRTC endpoints for uh, desktops or browsers. No? And in this slide, well, uh, later you can take a look to the information that is showed here. Strange how we can also provide interconnection with a Skype for Business or any other uh, platform as a service that you can imagine. Okay. This depends again on the demands of the of the customer. So moving to the um, moving to the last model that we have here. 
um, adding telco services to existing business applications and, um, and websites. So um, here, well, the first point is something that I started to explain before, and we have used a video to try to explain this, but I would like to remark this again. The phone number is a key uh, access of the telco today. For sure, it belongs to the uh, to the user because the user can manage his or her portability. But it's a, a key access, not from the point of view of the telco. And today, is we can say that it's more or less the smart way to manage the personal identity. Because we know, as uh, so you can see in the upper part of this slide, that this telephone number is uh, reachable worldwide, that is, uh, has been standardized for a long time, uh, more than 100 years, and it's a smart way to uh, manage identity here. So, just to reinforce that the methods that um, WebRTC can be used from the telco point of view uh, to keep uh, the U shades of the uh, telephone number, okay, and this, this is something that could be really interesting. You know? How to make this type of uh, use cases where you can have simultaneous ringing that you can change or you can use as the A number, your personal identity, that could be your mobile or, or, or desk phone, despite you are using a browser to make this call from other locations. You know? This is something that we find or we understand that it's really, uh, really interesting today. But moving to the um, exposure of services, just uh, we would like just to introduce that something that is uh, today possible is to expose part of your network capacities via APIs. This is something that probably most of you are already using for SMS uh, or other services, but it's also possible for WebRTC building easy to understand, because this is something that is supposed to be adopted by um, developers, easy to understand uh, APIs, methods of these APIs, or um, mm, standard scripts in order to provide clickable buttons in websites of customers to have, uh, uh, well, these type of solutions that you, that you can imagine related with customer care that probably are the easy to, uh, to adopt from the point of view of the, uh, of the user. Or just to add some scripts to add to the signature of your emails in order to have a callback or, or to receive an incoming call from, uh, from a user that is receiving an email from you. This is easy to do, it's a way for those telcos that are interested on, on this, it's an easy way to um, uh, manage more traffic from the user. Uh, again, uh, we had, and we, we are currently having this uh, question, it's difficult to monetize this directly. Some of the telcos, what, uh, what they are doing is trying to adopt the same fees that they have for the local traffic. No? So imagine you are using this, uh, to making an out outgoing call, uh, you can be wherever, uh, but uh, you can suppose that the user is, uh, uh, or you can uh, have the same fees that you have for uh, local calls in, in case uh, he is in the uh, headquarters of the office, or, or of his office, or of his company, sorry, or uh, he is at home. Well, depends on your strategy, for sure. Well, we know that we are also in an era that is very difficult to monetize uh, services. Uh, but in any case, um, to keep the usage of the, uh, of the um, access of the telco to route traffic, despite this could be free, it's uh, interesting and uh, well, uh, you should be quite imaginative in order to uh, get more revenue from this. So, um, ways to exposure these APIs. Well, they are different. In fact, uh, uh, some um, vendors already have a solution for this. You need to involve uh, the application server for WebRTC that uh, you are using together with the um, WebRTC gateway, okay, 
Um, we have been involved in an initiative called ORCA.GIS. Uh, that was an initiative of the ATIS, a uh, well-known forum in the US. And um, basically, um, with uh, the idea of this, what to involve, and uh, well, different uh, telcos are involved here, AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, CenturyLink, uh, with the idea to expose the same methods to develop web RTC applications. Again, this is interesting because the problem with the Talco API is that uh, your APIs are going to be different to your competitor, and sometimes it's difficult to involve uh, developers to work with your APIs just in case they need to work with different Talcos because they need to adapt to the uh, methods that different Talcos are, are exposing. So the idea here is to have something a standard, at least some basic uh, methods, and it's something that we have adopted for SQLJS. Uh, other vendors are involved here, Ericsson, Alcatel Lucent, as far as I remember, that are also exposing APIs to develop applications working with this. And the idea to, to have something more or less uh, a standard and try to avoid vendor blocking. This for sure is a possibility. But if you involve a company here, you can also develop your own uh, proprietary APIs depending on your intents. Uh, moving to this slide, I will try to finish in the next uh, two or three minutes just to give you an example of what the APIs that Citgo uh, work is exposing. The most important one probably could be the service API that you can see in the upper part of this slide. This is the one that we offer in a service mode in order to uh, um, help third parties to manage the provisioning of the application, the user management, and also the service enablement. Okay. And we have uh, others that are in a client mode that we call SIPO connectors, where we are using basically APIs that uh, are exposed by different vendors. This is the case of Alcatalucent, Huawei, and others, and elements like uh, HSS for um, of, uh, authentication of the user and so where we are asking uh, for parties in order to minus the, uh, minus the service. And finally we have something that we call WAC API despite we are not working in the session le uh, uh, level um, the application is reporting via this API to the WAC with this the current situation so we know uh, if you are in a call, if not, and, and this type of information that is being used for reporting, for troubleshoot, for for troubleshooting, and for the management of the of the service. And uh, the last two slides, just you could to give you, well, something that we have previously introduced is possible to add a component, a web RTC component in an existing application, hybrid or native one, just to add a communication layer to this. Uh, uh, to this application. So imagine in the case, the, the example that we have with the uh, uh, images there is an uh, electronic banking application of a bank that is running in mobile devices. And uh, how you can add uh, uh, a menu, an uh, item in the menu called contact agent where you are adding a communication layer, possibility to make a voice video uh, call from this uh, existing application. This is something that is interesting, and this is what, uh, what I'm going to explain in the, uh, in the last slide. Um, this is interesting to build a specific solutions for the uh, small and medium-sized companies. And just to give you some examples uh, without mentioning uh, and customers. Later, if you want more information, you can ask on this. Uh, Mining a telco that is reselling in Salesforce that, uh, to a small and medium sized company. They have an agreement with Salesforce and they are reselling Salesforce from, uh, from their cloud. Uh, the idea here, they, they can add the possibility to make voice calls through Salesforce but using your phone identity. So when you are going in Salesforce, you are paying to, the, to your uh, uh, telco provider and uh, when you are making a call because you are in a telephone number and you are, making a, you are clicking on top of this uh, telephone number, you are making from your browser an outgoing call uh, but uh, using your uh, 
uh, phone identity as the A number. No? A similar approach can be adopted for uh, Gmail, or, uh, Office, or, or others. And this is something that we have built for, for different telcos, and I think that makes sense. Eh? In the case of Salesforce, I have uh, seen telcos that were not only interested in making or going calls for even incoming calls, uh, they were also interested in using Bob OTC just to provide technical support. When you are clicking the button, you are making a voice call, but you are also making a screen sharing with, you are sharing your screen with an agent, uh, a technical agent that is providing technical support to the problem that you have with Salesforce. No? So they, they can be used in, in different ways. And just to finish, okay, uh, this is just an example that we built three years ago. Uh, it's a communication layer for, for Gmail. The idea is to make possible to make and receive calls with your uh, Gmail accounts. If you are a Gmail user, uh, you are going to have always your tab open with Gmail uh, to receive these uh, uh, emails. And the idea is that when someone is calling to your text phone, when someone is calling to your mobile device, when someone is also calling to your telephone at home, you can receive the call here. And, uh, and you, you don't need to have a mobile device with you or so to, uh, to answer the call. And also, again, it's also possible to make outgoing calls, to click in a telephone number in the signature of an email, to go to Google Contacts just to click directly from an icon together with the telephone number of the user. So it provides a lot of flexibility and something that you, as a telco, in case that you have a strategy to reach the SME market with uh, applications, with Salesforce, with SAP, with Google, with Office, and any other solution, is something that is possible. So that's all in terms of uh, content. Uh, thanks for your uh, for being here, and uh, let me move to the questions. So remember that you have uh, um, a possibility to chant uh, questions, and we'll try to answer the questions that they have here in front of me. Um, we have uh, four or five uh, questions related with probably people that join uh, later. And the slides uh, will be available. Okay, so today you will receive an email with uh, information on this, with uh, a link to download the slides. Important that I forgot to mention before: these uh, slides will be available uh, from Dropbox. In case you have any problem to download from Dropbox, just let me know. I, I will send these slides using uh, any other platform with transfer or something like this. I think that there are around 25 uh, megabits, so it's something that sometimes it's hard to attach this in, in an email. But well, in, in any case, uh, you can get in contact with me, and I will be more than happy, okay, to uh, to share the slides. And similar with the recordings, not only the slides, uh, well, uh, uh, the the voice uh, and the slides uh, uh, are being recorded, so this. Uh, will be available in YouTube probably at the end of the day today. Okay. So, uh, more questions. Uh, questions related with uh, Windows Phone. In case of Windows Phone, uh, for sure we have a possibility to build a native application for Windows Phone. To be frank, I'm not completely sure if, uh, if Cordova is the best approach to adapt an existing HTML5 application into an application for Windows Phone. And I think that not more than 3-4% of the market is, is, is today uh, using Windows Mobile. But well, in any case, uh, I can check this and, and come back to you. Okay. And we have an additional question related with uh, BlackBerry. In the case, uh, well, probably because uh, the question uh, comes from uh, Canada. Um, I think that in the case of BlackBerry, uh, I guess that you uh, you mean those BlackBerry that cannot run uh, Android. I think that uh, we should have a similar situation. Native, sure, and um, probably not uh, not the case of hybrid applications, but uh, at least with Cordova. But it's something that uh, I can check for you. Uh, related with the adoptions of uh, browsers, uh, uh, just to summarize this, um, 
um, Chrome, Firefox, Opera are supported today. The problems are Safari, uh, Apple, and uh, Internet Explorer. Not Microsoft Edge because today is supporting Web OTC, but uh, Explorer not. And uh, for those uh, browsers, we are using uh, plugins. So with the starting up plugins, yes, once uh, you are adding uh, Web OTC support there. Uh, in the case of uh, of uh, Apple, uh, not Apple, iPhone, iOS, uh, it's a real problem, okay, because they are blocking uh, Web OTC, despite you are using Chrome. Uh, so you need an application, okay, there. And with this application, after getting the approval from Apple, you can have access to the camera, and microphone, and so you can replicate, you can have the same user experience, uh, but you need to build this application. Again, it's also possible, remember, to, to build this in a hybrid way or to build from scratch using uh, uh, a native approach, no? uh, using the SDK that, uh, as an example that, uh, and that we are providing. Related with the adoption of RCS uh, worldwide and Balti, to be frank, I don't have uh, um, good information on this. I know that GC GSMA, um, I think that they have some reports that are providing information about which is the current adoption of uh, uh, both uh, technologies. At least what well, we are facing in Spain, and we were one of the early adopters of, of the technology, but I'm not completely sure in all the countries in, in South America, but which is the current uh, situation. Uh, we have three questions related with the comparison of uh, Balti or on to Web or DC. Well, again, I'm not a, a, an expert, but uh, let me um, uh, uh, check what related with the um, with the quality of service, that is something that uh, uh, more or less two of the questions are related with this. Yes, do as a telco, but you can't uh, uh, give the priority to uh, uh, to traffic, so you can't give priority because Web RTC is using some defined or so something that you can define by the network uh, ports or, or so. Uh, so it's something that you can provide. Uh, a different behavior uh, for those uh, um, services that are based on Web RTC. Imagine those telcos that are using or that are uh, building over the top solutions, they are providing more quality, uh, um, network capacity, and even uh, a possibility to send and receive data than from the uh, applications like WhatsApp, Beaver, or so, so it's a way to, uh, to compete. Uh, another question for, uh, related with Balti and WebRTC is related with the, uh, with the safety. Oh, uh, it's a good question. I can ask from the point of view of WebRTC, I'm not completely sure about which is the final situation in terms of security for Balti. Uh, but uh, I like this question. I, I, I will try to, to answer this, this later. In any case, it's something that is uh, uh, interesting is that uh, well, what for this city, um, well, uh, is using DTLS SRTP uh, by default, so uh, signaling is different, media is different, and to end, well, we can add uh, an element uh, to play the role of back to back user agent, so it's something. It's something it's an element that you can use for uh, network recording and this type of things, but by default, something that has been uh, defined as uh, secure by default. No, it's, it's different to voice over IP, where the adoption of, uh, uh, of uh, SRTP uh, to secure the traffic is, is less. No? And uh, we have an additional question related with browsers. It's not only browsers, because I, I, I tried to summarize before, uh, but it's not only browsers. It's related also with the versions. Chrome, uh, Firefox, uh, they are supporting Web RTC uh, for the last two years. Uh, this is not the case of uh, Safari, but with uh, Microsoft Edge, it's with the last, uh, uh, the last version. Depending on the version, Depending on the type of, uh, of browser, different multimedia, different uh, methods of the WebRTC API are, uh, are supported. No? This is part 
of what my company is providing. Using the work, uh, we know, because we are receiving the HTTP request, we know which is the type of, uh, um, a, of browser, the type of device that the user is using. And depending on this, is uh, we are adapting uh, uh, the application to run uh, uh, better with, uh, uh, with, uh, with the device of the user. And if I'm not wrong, uh, we have a final question. I'm sorry because I forgot to explain this uh, before. It's related with the codex. Uh, H264 um, BP8 are supported for video. By default, BP8 was the definite one. It uh, well, supports uh, uh, different uh, data transmission. is uh, adaptive to the network capacity, but H.264 is also uh, supported. And it's interesting when uh, um, you are demanding um, interconnection with legacy elements that are supporting H.264 because you know that uh, video transcoding is quite Sometimes it's quite uh, uh, expensive. No, it's a way to uh, to reduce the cost that uh, that you have uh, uh, with this type of uh, 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 adaptation. No? Um, the final question: If you don't have more, does Quiz provide application for iPhone? Yes, this is part of our portfolio. We have application for Android, iPhone, and uh, and. Uh, uh, browsers, so it's, it's part of your portfolio. If, uh, if you want to have additional information on about this, we'll be more than uh, more than happy to share more details. Okay. Uh, I think that that's all in terms of uh, questions. Thanks a lot for for your time. Thanks a lot for uh, joining today. And uh, remember, uh, later today you will receive an email with uh, additional information uh, uh, with the slides and with uh, uh, with the uh, link to uh, access to the recordings of the webinar. Thanks a lot for your time. I hope you uh, enjoyed this and have a nice day. See you.